Hello friends, my name is Taras Sabadash. I'm from Cobblestone Freeway Tours Company and today I'm really glad to share with you with the two really popular dishes with the Ukrainian cuisine. This is borscht and unusual vareniki. You would say borscht and vareniki, it's so easy and because everyone can cook it at home. But take a deep breath and our borscht is not red and no beets there. Our borscht will be green. And our vareniki, we call them lazy vareniki, but also we call them palushke. So don't forget to take some notes for our recipes and let's go. So first of all, we will start from uh, our soup from green borscht. And I will tell you what ingredients we need for borscht. So, the main ingredient for our borscht is sorrel. That's why it's a green one. That's why the color of our borscht will be green. Uh, we need potato. Uh, we need one carrot, one small onion, two boiled eggs and sour cream. That's why our borscht will be creamy and will be delicious. So, let's start cooking. So, we need two middle potatoes. Peel it. Dobre. Then we need to prepare our potato to borscht. Small cubes. Then we will put our potato to our pan with the water. Also, don't forget to add some salt. And we will cover it. Then we will use carrot and we will grate carrot. Because with carrot our borscht will be delicious and will be nice to see another curl in the, with the green. Why I am use grater? Because all ingredients when you grate them, they taste uh, better in all dishes. Doesn't matter. I, I know that you can use blender or you know a special machine for that i love to grate vegetables that's why you need to be careful with that so next our step next our step is to prepare our main ingredient for green borscht so you need a good handful of sorrel actually that sorrel i picked up yesterday in a field of my grandmother she was really interesting. What I'm doing there? And like she asked, Taras, what are you doing there? And I told her, Granny, I need some sorrel for green borscht. And then that she told me, you need more. Take more sorrel. You need more sorrel. Like, Granny, I, I'm enough with the, just with that. She actually, my granny, she's 82 and she lives by herself. And she patient about her vegetables, her gardens her fruits and vegetables so we will cut sorrel actually it doesn't matter what kind of size of the sorrel you will cut it because when we will fry it you will see that the sorrel will be really really small pieces why green borscht? why? because our plant sorrel uh, grows in the middle of the spring and the first part of summer that's why it reminds me when I was a kid, always my mom and my grandmother, they cooked for us uh, sorrel borscht and when I tried uh, the borscht, I was sure that the summer already came. And if we're talking about main dishes of Ukraine, it's if we're talking about soups, of course it's borscht. So we have three different kinds of borscht. It's regular red borscht with the beets, with the cabbage, with the beans. And of course you can add some meat there. Second one is a green borscht that you can prepare with the sorrel. A third one is that borscht with the young beets leaves. So you will just, the recipe is really similar to that one because you will uh, just use the leaves of the beets and you will cut it 
Uh, also, you can uh, cook it with the sour cream, with the different kind of vegetables, and it stays all, uh, also great. But the main secret of the borscht is borscht tasting better on the second day. Doesn't matter who cook it, but it will be better tasting on the second day. And each cooker who are cooked borscht, tasting, tasting of the borscht is different one. So, but I never, I never met bad borscht. For, for me, I like borscht and it's, it's all the time, it's, it tastes delicious and it's good. Also for that borscht, for the uh, sort of green borscht, you can also use some meat. It can be veal or it can be pork or chicken meat, doesn't matter, but I love borscht without meat. For green borscht, for red one, I can use chicken, whatever. We will put our solar over here. To make tasting our borscht good, we will just use one middle onion, because we are going to fry it with the sorrel. And we also small cubes or your favorite size. For frying our sorrel and onion, we need 50 milliliters of oil. Okay, so we will put our onion here and we are starting to fry it. So, you will ask me where you can find the sorrel. How to find sorrel. Oh, it's over here. This is our solar. Actually, that leaves of the sorrel because uh, the sticks of the sorrel, they are really sour. So you can find them in the fields or in the hills, on a, in, a, in the grace actually. And also you can buy it, I, I, I guess that you can buy it in the market or um, different place. Then, while you're over here, then we will add our solar to our onion. Don't forget to mix up. It, the sorrel will be really quickly go smaller and smaller because of the temperature of the frying pan. But it's okay, it's normal. After a few seconds, we need to add our sour cream. I guess four spoons, it will be okay. Good. And mix up again. If you have any dry spices, you can also add to the gravy for our sours to our soup. But often, really often, I just use salt and pepper for that. I, I'm sure that it's more than enough for, for that. So salt. and pepper. Actually, my mom, when she cooked red borscht, I like really sweet borscht, just vegetables and beets. So she, sometimes she can add some sugar and vinegar. That's why our red borscht tasting sweet. We'll cover it for a few minutes. Then to our potato, we need to add our carrot. That's why the color of the soup will be interesting and taste will be better. Unfortunately, we don't have any uh, extra service for smelling of the dishes, unfortunately, but I'm sure that you, you know that it, will, it tastes and smells really good. Then, we will mix up again our sorrel. If you use sour cream, the percentage of the sour cream is still 10% of the, I guess, fat. It will be normal to set that. 
I think two minutes more and it will be done. Okay, our gravy is ready. Okay, and we add our soil to our soup. Don't forget to mix up everything and we will cover it on a half. Our bush cooking and we can start to prepare our ingredients for the next dishes. Uh, for, for our next dish is lazy vareniki. Why lazy vareniki? And also we call them polushke. Polushke it's kind of like a small small uh, pieces of the dough. I call it like small fingers of the dough. And why it's lazy? You know, of course, how to prepare and how to cook vareniki. You need to boil potato, you need to make a dough for that, and then you can need to prepare the small circles, we call it varenechki for vareniki. And then you will put, you know, filling to the dough, make vareniki and put and then boil it. So for lazy vareniki, the recipe, it's more easier than for vareniki, for usual vareniki. That's why we need mashed potato, we need two fresh eggs, we need flour, and for our gravy we need sour cream, one onion, I will put here, and bacon. That's it, this is all our ingredients, salt and pepper for tasting. So, we need mashed potato. Uh, for potato, I always use some fried onion, salt and pepper, but also you can just use normal mashed potato, no onion, if you don't like it, it also will be okay. We need two fresh chicken eggs, actually, by the way, they are from my, uh, from my village, so... And we need to make a dough for that. It's really, really yellow. It means that they are fresh. Then we need to add salt, just a little bit. Pepper, the same. And also, don't forget about borscht. All the time you need to mix up borscht. Good. Let's go back to Palushke. Then we need flour. We will need, I guess, two or three spoons, but don't forget to make flour soft and mix up it with potato. All the time mix up all ingredients. Also, to mashed potato, if you like, you can add some cottage cheese, but mostly original recipe for palushke. It's just potato and flour and eggs, salt and pepper. So our dough is ready. So what we need next? We need about one and a half liter of water. Also, don't forget to add some salt to water. When you cook varanakis or you want to boil potato or lazy varanaki, don't forget to add some salt to the water. Then we will start making. So we divide our dough into two pieces. Then we will cut after that we need to make 
полюшки. And now we're ready to finish our soup. We need actually two boiled eggs. Uh, one we will cut on the small cubes and we'll put to the pan. And the second one we will need for decoration. Have to boil it and have really good boiled yolk inside. So before you boil the water, just put some salt there. And then double wash with the cold water and leave it for five minutes. After that, we will have like this. Then we will need to cut on the small cubes. Again, doesn't matter what kind of sides you will normal because we will add to the pan. And mix up again. And we will leave it for one minute. One minute is more than enough for to finish our borscht. I hear that's our water ready for palushka. Okay? Our palushka ready to go to water. Boiling, it's about four minutes. You will see because Balushki they will go up. And mix up again our soup. It smells so good. Our borscht prepared. We will leave it. If you remember my secret of the borscht, it stays better for the second day. So we will try today, but it will be better tomorrow. Then, when our palushki boiling, we need to prepare gravy for that. What we need for that? We will use onion and bacon. We call it spondarok. Also, you can just prepare some onion without bacon if you don't like it. Or you can use just regular butter, doesn't matter. And we will beginning fry our onion. And after that we need to cut really quickly our bacon. And we'll do like this. Again, doesn't matter about size of the bacon. I will make the same with the cubes. And frying with the onion. How to know when our onion will be ready? You will see yellow color of the onion. That means two minutes and our gravy is ready to add our sour cream. If you don't like sour cream or you just can eat sour cream or milk products, you can use just the one big tomato, put to the blender, and make tomato sauce with the bacon or regular ketchup. And now we can add our sour cream to bacon and onion. Also, Palushki, it's also one of the best uh, dishes mm. kids for kids because they like Varenike and the same on the second day you can fry them and it's awesome. For a good tasting we will add some salt and pepper. Sometimes I like to use some uh, dry spices. 
Now our palushki ready. Also you can make your different kind of size of the palushki. I like like this, like balls. Our gravy also ready. It's really important to add after because it's a dough. That's why it can be stuck together. That's why we are making our presentation. And the last. Our palushki ready. And now we will make presentation for our soup. Mm -hmm. We will mix up and then We need our boiled egg. We will divide this. We will put like this. And we will add. I love dill, so I will add everywhere. And our soup ready. Bon appetit. Much noho. So, all our dishes ready. But really main part for our lunch we need the most important thing is it's not a water it's a moonshine so bon appetit and much no